Welcome back to Book Reviews, where we're always eager to put the bow in your chicka wow wow. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're not alone. Neither do I. I haven't known for a very, very long time. Speaking of incoherent and contradictory babbling, Twilight. Although I've only read the first novel, from what I gather, the other three only get worse. The movies are a new, nauseating beast altogether, but something good did come out of them. Once a book series becomes a movie, there's really nowhere else for it to go. The awfulness is contained. We know what to expect. Sure, there might be a prequel to get that last buck, which is strangely prevalent nowadays with the young adult genre, but for the most part, it's over. It's all behind us. No more Twilight. No more Bella. No more... Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Life and Death, Twilight Reimagined was unexpected and unnecessary. I can only think of one thing more unexpected and unnecessary. And his name is John C. <laughs> What? Overused meme? Guys, I haven't been making content in a while, I need to catch up. Ah, <sighs> so what do we've got here? A freaking green apple in one hand instead of two. How clever. It's the same sparkly, pale-ass skin as the first one, so you can bet that we're in for some vampire tomfoolery. In Life and Death, Twilight Reimagined, Stephanie Meyer makes us ask the age-old question of... Why? Why does this exist? Why is this $11 on Amazon? Sure, you get the original book, but if you're buying this special edition, you probably already have a copy. Books aren't like remastered albums or HD remakes of video games. They don't come out of the Disney vault every few decades. My copy of Twilight is still proudly collecting dust on my shelf. Life and Death exists in its own special world, aside from the Twilight canon. Since Meyer just flipped the genders of characters, I guess it was a critique of modern concepts of femininity and masculinity? If so, she fails! Alright, let's just get into this sucker. In case you didn't know, Life and Death is essentially the same story as Twilight, except all the characters have switched genders, except for the dad, because... Instead of Bella in all her self-pitying glory, we get... Beaufort? What the hell is a Beaufort? You could not think of any other names except for Beaufort? The female version of Edward is named Edith, with a Y. This immediately makes me think of Rob Pattinson if he was an old, crippled grandma. There are plenty of little things that can tick you off about this book and the gender debate it apparently wants to have. In the original, there was a vampire named Rosalie who had the backstory that she was raped and left for dead. In this book, the male equivalent to Rosalie, Royal, which I swear to god is not a name no matter how you cut it, is never sexually assaulted. Their backstory is that they simply just got the crap beaten out of them. Because God knows men can't be raped or sexually assaulted. It was a totally platonic beatdown. As far as the actual story and narrative go, there are very little changes. It can be kind of eerie sometimes reading entire passages that are identical to what they were in the original book, save for a few pronouns or omitted sentences. The most jarring thing about this novel, though, which probably got me more than anything else, was the main character. Beaufort. He's called Bo in the novel, but I really don't care. No parent would name their child Beaufort in good conscience. Anyway, remember how in the original book Bella was an emotional wreck with no self-esteem? She's a horrible character, but she still got... character. Teenage girls can relate to this emotional train wreck, cause you know teenage girls. When it comes time to have Beaufort have the same scenes of vulnerability as in the original book, we don't see it. There's never really a moment where Beaufort really loses faith in himself. There's never a moment where he questions himself too deeply or is on his floor crying because, you know, men don't cry. <laughs> I'm moisturizing my eyes! Bo is an unmoving emotional rock. He's essentially what a woman would stereotypically think is going on inside a man's head. It's really evident that Meyer does not know how to write the mental intimacy of a male protagonist. Beaufort analyzes Edith's body to a creepy degree. He covets that she's so skinny that he can see the bones underneath her skin. That is unhealthy in so many uncomfortable ways. The ending closes the door on any reimagined new moon, thank god. Let's just say if you have seen how Twilight should have ended, you'll have a good idea of how this one goes down. There's an absurd amount of exposition in the last two chapters, though, which really feels unnecessary considering that there's not going to be any more sequels. All in all, I give this book... <coughs>
out of 10. It's so superfluous that nothing beyond its price tag can really justify its existence. It reinforces the gender stereotypes it was apparently trying to address, insulting anyone who picked it up out of interest. Thanks for watching, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe.